just supposed to be a free yoga class. I'm not claiming that's anything more than, than a physical, physical practice. But University of Ottawa student leaders shut it down over concerns of cultural appropriation, that the class took a practice from India without respecting its roots. Gandhi, you gotta pick up the pace. You're not gonna burn any carbs. There's a long tradition of the mainstream taking what it wants from minorities. My gosh, I usually do this with a mirror. Only decades ago, right here. there was no taboo to performing in blackface. Sidelined by racism, you ain't nothing but a black musicians saw their music make millions. You ain't nothing but a especially in the hands of white superstars. But without appropriation, rock and roll wouldn't be the same. And the taking never stopped. To my own girls here with the beating butt. Twerking's roots, West Africa and hip hop. <laughs> Not Miley Cyrus's notorious 2013 VMA performance. At this week's American Music Awards, JLo was decked out in indigenous inspired kitsch. The headdress, a powerful symbol in native culture, is routinely turned into a fashion novelty. And people are just taking and taking and taking without really giving thought to what these mean to our people. But no culture is an island, hence Indians doing hip hop. And North Americans doing yoga. Question is, where is the line? I'm joined by our panelists. Tasha Carradin is a columnist with the National Post and iPolitics. John Moore is a talk radio host in Toronto. And Dalton Higgins is a culture critic and author. So a lot of imagery there. We're hearing so much about cultural appropriation these days. Why so much, John? You know what, I mean, I don't want to dismiss it all because I think there are legitimate issues here and there is appropriation and more importantly, I think there are things that aren't borrowed from another culture but are imitated in order to, you know, kind of cast dispersion on the culture. But I would also, if I can sound like, sound like a tired old white man for a moment, um, I think that campuses are starting to run out of things to, to grieve, you know? I mean, we had apartheid, we had the Vietnam War, we had uh, women's rights and gay rights and now we've reached this point where we kind of, identify any one thing and say, how could we possibly find this offensive? We must find this offensive. What do you think, Dalton? Why so much now? Right. I mean, I don't know if I agree with your position. I mean, I think because it's important that you did identify yourself as a white male, um, <laughs> I think those on the receiving end of these acts of these mass acts of appropriation are going to view Jennifer Lopez, um, you know, what's happening at University of Ottawa very differently. And, you know, I'm not here to be the appropriation police, but I think um, you do have to draw the line. A, a line has to be drawn in the sand, you know. Tasha, what's your sense of why are we hearing some? Why is this blowing open now? Well, I think there is an element to what you were saying, John, in the sense of the political correctness from the 80s, which more morphed into other forms on campuses and the sort of, I guess, victim culture that we have today and people looking for things to be offended by constantly. And you see it expressed on campuses because I think young people also uh, tend to take things, you know, further because they're they are experimental time in their life and this is what you hear. I do think, though, that there's also a greater consciousness, perhaps, of race issues, um, you know, black men being shot by police. We keep hearing this in the United States, black men being carded in Toronto, um, people being followed in stores because they, they are suspected because of their skin color of being thieves. So I think people are, are conscious, very conscious of this. Unfortunately, I think, the, and we'll get to the conversation about cultural appropriation, I think it's not the way to go to address those issues. I think in some ways, in fact, it almost trivializes what the real root of racism is. So little hints there that it maybe isn't the biggest deal in the world, Dalton. Tell us why uh, it can be seen as offensive. Well, yeah, I mean, it's a huge deal. I mean, when you look at, uh, we see examples of, uh, you know, whether it's, a, a, you know, Aboriginal headdresses, um, you know, the bindi, you know, the South Asian bindi thing, or people wearing dreadlocks, you know, locks, I mean, you know, I'm of Caribbean descent. Um, you know, due to unfortunate human histories, there is a sort of power dynamic at play. So what I find is, you know, members of the dominant culture, sometimes they may look at it as sort of trite, something to slough off. Hey, you know, it's just some thing. It's, a, it's just a, an accessory, a fashion statement. It's mm -hmm. very light. But then um, when you're dealing with something sacred, you know, like the native headdress, for anybody that, you know, if you take the time to speak to somebody who is a First Nations Métis Inuit, um, it has deep, rich meaning. You know, it's sacred. It's not just something to, to sort of lightly, you know, walk on a runway and, you know, that's not what it is. You know, it has meaning, yeah. Yeah, but sure. it, it has meaning, but at the same time, think of Madonna um, in the 1980s. She wore crucifixes. The, the Catholic religion was part of her fashion statement constantly. And I, what bothers me is this notion of appropriation, because to me, culture is a fluid thing. Mm -hmm. Culture um, appreciates 
like other culture, incorporates other culture. You know, Amisha Bruger Gosman sings opera, for example. She's a black woman. Um, why wouldn't she be able to do that? Um, at the same time, you see the, the kilt, a Scottish symbol. It becomes a fashion. I mean, nobody talks today about that being cultural appropriation because anyone of any color or, um, or ethnicity wears a kilt. So to me, I just find it a debate that is, you know, there's a difference between insulting, I agree, denigration, mm -hmm. yes. and appreciation. But I, I reject the notion of appropriation as a bad thing. So yeah. is, yeah, it sure. only, is it only offensive if it's the mainstream taking over the culture of the minority and not the other way around? Mm -hmm. Well, there is, a, again, you know, due to history, like, you, you know, the point you make, first of all, political correctness, can we just completely demolish, <laughs> destroy that terminology? I, I wish mean, we could. No, no, could we? I mean, it's, it's kind of like, you know, people saying, yeah, Trudeau's cabinet is uh, gender balanced now. Uh, because, you know, he's being politically correct. No, he's trying to represent demographic realities, you know? So can we just all together lose that? It makes me nervous, you know, when I hear that terminology. Um, but as far as, um, you know, coming from, you know, as a member of the black community, I can give you an anecdote. I mean, you know, we saw um, Elvis Presley, for example, mm -hmm. you know, a lot of musicians, whether it's uh, Snow from Canada, a lot of the musicians from the dominant culture that end up, uh, you know, raking in the millions and, you know, zooming to number one on the billboard, uh, you know, pop charts, uh, by lifting and borrowing, you know, tenets of black culture. Um, certainly in the black communities, um, they do find that to be kind of, you know, it's, a, it's, a, it's offensive, it's weird to us because you invented something, you innovated something, and you're not reaping any of the rewards, right. political, but social, economic, or otherwise, you know? So, a, so it's really confusing yeah. to see, yeah. Isn't it almost a Darwinian process, though, where things, you know, well up, and then other people begin to adapt them? And that happens in music, it happens in fashion, and I agree entirely, you know, a woman wearing a native headdress on a runway is wrong, but fashion inspired by, uh, you know, Indian pants or inspired by Japanese kimonos is borrowing the best of another culture, not necessarily stealing or denigrating it. Right. Well, the thing, so well, where's the, the line then, John? Yeah. Well, there How is do you a line. I mean, it out? Yeah, that's the funny thing. I mean, it's sort of like uh, what Brandeis, Justice Brandeis said about pornography. You know it when you see it. Um, mm. You know, I think, but, for example, I think it's a very legitimate issue when we talk about uh, sports teams named after natives. I mean, mm -hmm. if you have uh, denigrated the native culture, if you try to destroy the native culture, and then you're going to say, no, the real red men are red men because we are proud of the native culture. No, it's because it's kind of kitsch. And, you know, there was a cartoon. And now the Eskimos. Right, and the Eskimos. And, and it's, it's yeah. you know, somebody actually came up with a cartoon, like, we would not have the Brooklyn Yids or the San Francisco slant eyes. But that goes exactly to the right. issue, it's denigrating. And I agree, you do cross lines, and we were seeing the images of blackface, for example. That is denigration. You would not right. do that today. That cultural norm has shifted. But I will take issue with you with the Native American headdress, for example. She's not impersonating someone. She's not pretending to be Native American. She is appreciating it for the beauty that it is, just as, like I said, Madonna wore crucifixes. That was a religious symbol, yeah, too. But, and but people then, can but be offended. I, offended. I agree some people might be but, offended, but, I mean, but there's not an intent to offend. has implicit meaning that yeah. I think the average white person probably doesn't understand. And it's been compared, for example, you wouldn't wear medals from, you know, World War II just for kitsch, for fashion. Some guy got think... arrested for doing right. that. But there's, <laughs> always, but, there's, but there's always this feeling of, you know, you love the culture, you love the tenets of the culture, like it's okay to, you know, snack on beef patties, you know, eat jerk chicken, but do you love the people? Are you, even, are you even remotely concerned with, you know, the people, the plight of the people? But isn't that good, yeah. though, that people do? This is the thing. I see it as exactly what we should be striving for. It's the opposite of putting up walls and saying this culture is only for us because globalization exposes everyone to all sorts of different things and appreciating I agree with you it's not doesn't necessarily follow but appreciating food from another culture or the beauty of another culture's art incorporating it into your own life is there no appropriation that's good so, right. yeah. well it, uh, appropriation you know that debate appropriation versus appreciation appreciation involves some kind of humility right so what that means is there's a two-way dialogue so before you make that decision to put on the bindi at the Halloween you know party the CBC Halloween party or what have you um, you know did you ever bother to ask, you know, the committee, you know, the community members, you know, what do they feel about this? You know, maybe right. they could educate you on but, the history of the headdress. But would you acknowledge there's a difference between that and Muddy Waters being adapted by the Rolling Stones? Oh, well, for sure there is. Absolutely. I mean, um, I think also this idea of paying homage to where things come from. A lot of uh, members of the dominant culture, I'm making a broad overgeneralization, uh, do not take that time to pay homage to what they are doing, right? So um, Jennifer Lopez, for example, we talk about, you know, appreciation is humility, right? It's kind of saying um, this is where it comes from in some kind of way, however you can do that. I right? just found her outfit really tacky. I don't care where it came from. I just right. really didn't like it. But the right. point is, you know, and this, this goes to this whole victim, the, the victimization and people identifying. Someone's always going to be offended by something. Right. And you're saying the example of a bindi, for example. I went to a party, a fundraiser for the AIDS community many years ago with a bindi. It was a, it was a themed of a Western across, a sort of a Bollywood Western theme. 
team, God help me, and I wore a sari. <laughs> but that was part of it. No one was trying to make fun of anything, mm -hmm. and nobody, I think, was offended. In fact, I have a friend from the Indian community whose reaction to all of this is that if I spent all my time thinking about how much I was offended by things, I'd never get anywhere. John? Well, can we come back to where we started, which was the yoga business? I mean, that <laughs> is completely outrageous. I, I mean, I don't know if anybody on the panel wants to defend the idea that we had appropriated yoga. I mean, you, and they wanted to call it mindful stretching. You know, it's just an <laughs> exercise. And yes, for some people, may perhaps in India, there is a religious aspect to it. But this is just something we have borrowed, not stolen. And I can't think of anybody being insulted it's kind of by borrowing. it. But it's I mean, people, a, people mm. engage in things, you know, and Tiger Woods plays golf or played golf. Um, you know, no one said, oh my goodness, he shouldn't play that because it's a Scottish sport and he's black. Like, this, right. is, this is why I think it goes both ways. Right, but there has, there, we're but, almost out of time. Yeah, yeah, well, there has to be a tipping point, okay? Mm. So, you know, in, in the United States, there's woman Rachel Dolezal, you know, um, <laughs> where that's on yeah, the extreme that end of... The white woman. No, she's white from they, Montana and she's taking on black identity. And so I'm thinking, you're thinking, what would compel one to sort of, you know, all of a sudden want to be black? You know, like, I don't get that. that's quite crazy pants. It's not okay. stretching, you right. know, it's not downward it's Maybe it's undiagnosed, yeah, mental yeah. health issues. I, I don't know. It's, it's something else, you know? Yeah. yeah. Well, I get the sense that if it's a uh, fashion accessory, you need to be a little bit careful. If it's music, you guys are kind of cool with it. But it comes down to respect, sounds like. But I'm sure it's not the last example we'll ever hear of cultural appropriation. <laughs> Great debate. Thanks for joining us today, Dalton. Thank you.